Good day everyone! For today, we're gonna talk about biotic and abiotic factors. But before that, let me present to you our learning target. So for today, we're gonna talk about concept of ecosystem. Then we're going to identify abiotic and biotic components of ecosystem. Then we're going to cite the importance of abiotic and biotic components on our ecosystem. Now, do you have any idea what is an ecosystem? The whole surface of the earth is a series of connected ecosystems. An ecosystem is a geographic area where the living and non-living organisms work together to form a bubble of life. Now, according to Merriam-Webster, an ecosystem is a community of organisms and its environment functioning as an ecological unit. In biology, an ecosystem is a community of organisms and their physical environment. Now, the notion of an ecosystem recognizes the many ways that an organism interacts with and depends on various parts of its environment. Now, there are two components of ecosystem. We have abiotic and biotic factors. Now, when we say abiotic factors, these are the non-living part of an ecosystem that shapes its environment. These are the non-living, the physical and chemical factors that influence an ecosystem. These include rocks, temperature, humidity, precipitation, water, air, and other non-living factors. Now, how do abiotic factors affect the ecosystem? Now, let me present to you the six major abiotic factors that play a significant role in our ecosystem. First, we have sunlight. Sunlight is used in ecosystems to heat the atmosphere and to evaporate and transpire water into the atmosphere. Now, light energy is also necessary for photosynthesis. It is a process used by bacteria, algae, and plants to convert carbon dioxide into cellular energy. Next, we have the air or the atmosphere. The atmosphere provides living things with oxygen. It consists of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% carbon dioxide, and other gases. This also protects organisms from certain harmful rays from the sun. However, a change in the number of gases present in our atmosphere can cause global warming. For example, if human keeps on burning fossil fuels as well as cutting trees, this may lead to an increased amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Now, too much of these gases can cause Earth's atmosphere to trap more and more heat leading to global warming. And it is one of the reasons why some animals and plants die, because they cannot adapt to too much heat. Next, we have water. Water is essential to life processes. An organism's survival depends on water to grow and reproduce. Now, try to imagine life without water. Do you think life would still exist? Now, due to various reasons, some oceans, lakes, or rivers become polluted, which may cause to the death of some aquatic animals. Next, we have soil. Soil is made up of bits of rocks, water, air, minerals, and the remains of one's living organisms. The structure and chemical makeup of soil and rock in an area affect the types of plants that grow there. Soil is important because it provides water and nutrients for plants and it is home for many organisms. The decline in soil moisture can increase the need for irrigation and agriculture and lead to smaller yields and even desertification, with potentially dramatic impacts on food production in the ecosystem. Next is temperature. All organisms are adapted to survive between a minimum and maximum range of temperature. The Earth's surface has different temperatures in different areas. Some animals and plants can bear extreme cold and some survive well in moderate temperature. There are also animals whose body's temperature fluctuates in different environmental conditions. Now, due to climate change, the average global temperature increases. 
High temperature causes damage not only directly by heat but also because they are usually accompanied by low humidity and drought. Plants will also be damaged if the temperature drops to 0 degrees Celsius. Next is wind. When we say wind, it is a moving air. It helps in the seed dispersal that assists in the pollination of plants. The wind is also important in the formation of rain as it speeds up evaporation and transpiration. Winds from dunes can be habitats for other organisms in the desert. Wind causes wave formation in lakes and oceans. Areas experiencing strong winds may distort the growth of trees and other buildings. Now let us proceed to biotic factors. It is referred to all living organisms found in the environment. The term biotic is formed by the combination of two terms, bio meaning life and ik meaning like. The term means lifelike, and it is related to all the living entities present in an ecosystem. This includes plants, animals, insects, birds, worms, fungi, bacteria, and other organisms living in an ecosystem. Biotic factors affect each other and influence the health of the ecosystem. They are participants in the food web and rely on each other for survival. These factors are grouped into three distinct categories, the producers, consumers, and decomposers. Now, how do producers, consumers, and decomposers differ from each other? Let us discuss it one by one. First, we're going to talk about producers. Producers or autotrophs are self-feeding or self-sustaining organisms, meaning they can make their own food. Autotrophs can be photoautotrophs or chemoautotrophs. When we talk about photoautotrophs, they are the group of organisms that use the sun's energy for photosynthesis, while chemoautotrophs are the group of organisms that use inorganic chemical reaction in the process of chemosynthesis. Plants and lichens are the primary producers in terrestrial ecosystem, while algae provide crucial nutrients for other organisms in the aquatic ecosystem. Now, let us proceed with consumers. Consumers cannot make their own food as producers do. Thus, they are called heterotrophs. They have to rely on producers to stay alive. Consumers are usually classified by the kind of food they eat such as herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Herbivores are animals that feed only on plants. Some examples are rabbit, giraffe, and butterfly. Carnivores are consumers that feed on other animals. The word carnivore are derived from the Latin and literally means meat eater. Some examples are snakes, lions, and eagles. Omnivores are animals that eat both plants and animals. In Latin, omnivores means to eat everything. Some examples are humans, chickens, and pigs. Now, let us proceed with decomposers. Decomposers are organisms that break down waste and dead organisms while returning the raw materials to the ecosystem. Hence, decomposers are considered as Earth's major recyclers. They clean and pack up the ecosystem. Now here's the energy flow among biotic factors. Now before we end this lesson, I just wanted to emphasize that the concept of ecosystem focus on interdependence. Each organism rely on another or to the whole ecosystem. It is more about relationship than just consumption. So that's it. See you in our next lesson. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you will be notified for more videos like this.